Hey, Penny, where you been? Oh my gosh, I went to the best sale. I got a Louis Vuitton purse. It's fantastic. It does all the things I needed to do, and it looks great. Louis Vuitton, was he a scientist? No, Leonard. It's a good thing you're cute. Penny and Leonard from the Big Bang Theory had an unstable relationship, mostly stemming from not understanding one another. Oh man, can anyone relate to that? Let's talk about talking together. The topic of men and women communicating is probably one of the hottest topics and has had so many books trying to remedy the situation. Are men from Mars? Do women come from Venus? One of our favorite explanations comes from Pastor Mark Gungor on his series, Laughing Your Way to a Better Marriage. He says that a man's brain is broken up into boxes with each box having its own topic. There's the wife box, the work box, the kid box, etc. None of them touch each other. They're taken out one at a time to be explored and then carefully put back, being careful not to touch each other. A woman's brain is the opposite. We're wired with all the things connected to everything. The work box is wired to the kid box. That's wired to the husband box and what's in the refrigerator and how much laundry needs to get done. And it circuits are running all the time. If you haven't seen this, you need to go find it on YouTube. We'll include the link here. It makes sense to us. So with those differences being assumed, how can we open up the lines for good communication? First, let's look at some of the various methods of communication. Language is the most obvious. When a man says he's okay, he's probably okay. If a woman says she's okay, she's probably not okay. Probably not okay. We need to learn to read between the lines and look at subtlety. This takes us to visual cues. Our partner might say they're fine, but they aren't making eye contact with you. Maybe they're staring you down in order to control the situation. They're making uncomfortable eye contact with you. You might notice somebody changing their breathing or their posture. Maybe their faces contort with a set brow or tight lips. And never forget the importance of body language. Yes, body language is a very important one. Crossed arms, a faraway gaze, or turning away from you are pretty obvious signs that things need to be dealt with. If you are holding hands, does the grip feel different? Does something feel forced instead of relaxed? Can you give an example? If I'm holding your hand and we're walking and you're not really holding my hand, you're just placing your hand in my hand, I may go, hmm, uh, what did I do? Then I got to run through the list of atrocities I've committed in the last six months, try to figure out which one you found out about. Who ratted you out? Then there's that part. Written comments, like in a text message or note, can be telling. If you're used to getting three paragraphs in a text, and suddenly you get, okay. I'm fine. Again, down the list of atrocities. What did she find out about? What are some of the remedies to some of these kind of awkward situations? And sometimes it's just a matter of there's a different atmosphere in the room. You can't really put your finger on an action or a response, but you can just sort of tell that something's off. So is it a good idea to bring those up or do you just kind of let it slide and hope that somebody will bring it up at some point? How do you, how do you know when to talk about it and how not to talk about it or when not to talk about it? And that's another one that sense in your environment is the air heavy or light. Is it dark and foreboding again down the list of atrocities or is it airy and comfortable? So the dark cloud that is raining on your head. That's a pretty good indicator. Mm hmm. It's not, uh, it's not always easy to tell if there's something going on, but you know, the best way to find out? Ask. Hey, how about that? That, that can feel really scary to me. Um, I used to be locked into a programming where I didn't feel that I had a right to be upset because I was programmed that way. So it would take me days to figure out if it was okay that I was upset over something. Then I had to formulate an entire communication process, Morse code, I don't know, Telegram. How was I going to bring this topic up? Because now it's been days. So how'd I go? Remember Tuesday when I seemed upset about a thing? So then you got to figure out, got to unwind all of the situations. And it's been very difficult for me to learn how to express what my needs are and to unravel some of the stuff. This is a it's never something simple. It always seems to be wound up in the, in the baggage somewhere. Well, if you're not, if you don't feel comfortable in asking or communicating your feelings, your questions, what does that look like? How, how do you get there? Well, I can remember a situation in our past. We weren't, we were just riding in the car to the coast and I really had to find a bathroom. 
And it took me eh, a good 15 minutes to get the courage to even ask you to stop. Because again, in the past, that wasn't necessarily a welcome request. So of course, you were very compliant and said, well, of course, let's find you, you know, a, a good place to go to the bathroom. And you pulled up in front of a porta potty. And then I had to pretend like that was going to be okay. But it really wasn't okay. So I had to say, is there somewhere else we can find? And you have no idea how much courage that took for me to do that. It was a lot. It was way out of my comfort zone. And I apologize for sighing and rolling my eyes and making a big deal out of yeah, it. Yeah, you made such a big deal out no, of it. No, I don't think I did. No, you, you did not. You never do. No. You've created a really good environment for me to just say, hey. Usually I just say, hey, there's food, and the car automatically just pulls over. I can't. It does its own thing. <laughs> That's a pretty easy way to do it. So learning each other's communication style is important. And we all have communication styles that we've we've grown up with. Maybe they weren't healthy ones. Maybe they were, um, maybe we didn't have any at all. My dad was really big into new age everything. If there was a seminar or a retreat, something that cost a lot of money where he could go and learn to be in tune with something, he was on it. The problem was he would bring home all that babbly nonsense that just felt so artificial and so contrived. And I didn't feel like he was actually talking to me. I felt like he was talking at me using whatever the new babbling language was. Thank you for sharing your feelings. It just, it turned me off. I don't want to communicate that way. I just want to be real. I actually hit him over the head with a newspaper because he wouldn't stop using his little buzzwords. I didn't want to talk to him after that. But here are some ways that maybe you could try if you're having some communication style issues. And let's face it, we all do. This isn't like if you're having communication issues, I guarantee you, if you're in a new relationship, you're going to run into this one. This yeah, one's... It's, it's when, not if. <laughs> yeah. And this doesn't necessarily even have to be with your partner. It could be with your kids, your parents, your friends. This isn't related necessarily just to the person that you're in a relationship with. Um, it could be anybody. So here's some thoughts. Um, make sure that the atmosphere feels safe for communication. If you feel threatened or uncomfortable, you're not going to speak out and say what's really bothering you. If you're the listener, don't interrupt, dismiss, or justify your actions if they are hurting somebody else. You need to make sure that the person you're in the relationship with, one, feels comfortable to communicate with you. Two, spend some time training yourself to learn about this other person and their behaviors, the way they speak, their body language. That's on you to learn these things. They shouldn't have to tell you everything. They shouldn't have to storm out of the room. You should immediately pick up when their ears go back. You said something wrong. Keep eye contact and possibly physical contact if both people feel comfortable with it. It can keep feelings from running amok. Let them know I'm here for you. Don't try to fix everything. Sometimes just listen. That's a man and woman thing. Seriously. Yeah. Guys are the fix it guys. I mean, fix the garbage disposal. You do all the things, but we don't always need a fix it guy. A lot of times we just need a place to vent and uh, get it out. And as the listener, you may not understand what's happening in the current situation. I've been there, but you can reassure your partner that you will work on changing any behaviors that have been hurtful and then actually do it. And it's okay to have to remind the person. I mean, I think as sometimes um, as Venus dwellers, we expect that if we say it once, you should have that figured out. You should remember what we said and that you shouldn't ever make that mistake again. But we know that's not true because Martians have short memories sometimes. It's the short antenna. <laughs> Aha. Well, look at that. We learned something new today. As a talker, you need to own up to your feelings too. I'm very guilty of dismissing my own feelings rather than owning my own feelings. Because I don't feel like I have a right to do that. So if this is a difficult topic for you, it, I get it. But I have learned that if I say things, instead of putting blame on somebody, like, this is what you did, if I can say this is how I feel about this, it tends to diffuse some of the emotion that can come out, both as the talker and the listener. Yeah, I'm bound to do or say something that's going to, I don't, I don't really want to use the word trigger, but it, I mean, potentially can without meaning to. I mean, it's nothing malicious or right. not being mean. Right. But I need to know what I did. And it's okay to say that that particular behavior makes me feel uncomfortable 
hurts my feelings, makes me want to take a steak knife and, well, no. Okay, no, we no, not no, that. No. We don't say that part out loud. Oh, right, right. I forgot. <laughs> That's the things we keep deep inside. If you can, if you can dial it in, see if you can be specific on what's really bothering you. Sometimes we don't really know, especially if there's been a lot of trauma in our past. Sure. We just know that this is feeling traumatic again and we don't really know why. And that's okay too. You can say, I don't, I don't know what this is all about, but I, I feel really uncomfortable right now. And it, it may not even be the action of the other person. It could just be hurt from the past somewhere. But getting it out then diffuses a lot of the hurt around it. Yeah, it just gets bigger and meaner if you push it down and try to keep it in. Hopefully you're in a relationship with somebody that you feel safe enough to be vulnerable with as well. Because obviously in communicating these things, you're going to feel very exposed and vulnerable. And if you're not used to that, or if you feel in the past that you haven't had a safe place to do it, that can feel a little unnerving. If I respect you, trust you, I'm going to be able to be vulnerable with you. Yeah. If I don't trust you, probably shouldn't be in the relationship or you're not ready to move into the next step of the relationship maybe you're there's, still a beginning sure there's that yeah yep because those things take time trust trust and respect are not instant gimmies you're preaching to the choir sister you got to work on those things yeah yeah you got to test each other and try out different situations that are going to build up the trust and the respect part that has helped a great deal Guys, by listening, sincerely paying attention, and learning about the other person in the relationship. Very important. Part of it stems from our ability as men to have the boxes and compartmentalize everything. Well, if she's telling you something important and you're in the I'm fishing box or the nothing box, which women don't have and but if you're in the nothing box and she's trying to relate to you something important, you're in the wrong place. Yeah, guys get a nothing box. What is that? I want a nothing box. I probably have to unhook some wires and then be attached to something really important and I won't remember passwords or something. I don't know. Okay, but you unhook the wrong wire. I know. You ever see the <laughs> TV shows where they clip the wrong wire and, you know, thermonuclear detonation kind yeah. of thing? Yeah, it could be bad. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want to do that. No. Just learn how to manage that 220 wiring that's going on in there. I think the last thing to remember is to be quick to forgive, prompt to shift your behavior, and then gracious in showing forgiveness. You're in this to help each other be better people. So like we always say, grace is part of the race. Yes. And I know you well enough because I've studied your behaviors. I've studied how you act around other people. I've studied how you interact and most everything that you do. And I know that if you do something that for whatever reason upsets me, I know that you didn't do something like that intentionally. Your purpose wasn't to tweak my tail feathers and, and cause me to be angry. So then I, knowing this, can go, all right, what was that about? And we can have a conversation about it. Right. And usually we're angry because of something that happened not related to the person. It was something from when you were 15 or 20 or 30. Right. And it has nothing to do with the current situation. It's not always the case, obviously. People still make mistakes, but a lot of times our feelings feel bigger than the situation calls for because we're still dragging something around with us that needs to be resolved. Proverbs 1, the Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. For gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young, let the wise listen and add to their learning and let the discerning get guidance. It's all about taking the time, seriously, taking the time, having the patience, truly listening to your partner. And this goes both ways because we've all got stuff. We've all got baggage. We all come with stuff that we've got to talk about and sometimes it's just that guys you don't need to always fix it you just need to listen i think it's important too that you if you're really really busy and you're distracting yourself by being busy you're not dealing with some of these things so slow down take a day or an afternoon just spend time together you're not going anywhere you're not doing anything and those are great places to start connecting some of these communication gaps very much or 
if that makes you uncomfortable, go for a walk, go do something and then communicate during a walk or a drive or whatever. Go find your groove, but it's going to be awkward and it's going to take a little while. And you have to embrace and accept that. So if we haven't been clear enough on stepping into a new relationship, it's going to be awkward. I think if there's a theme on this whole podcast, it's that it's going to feel a little strange. That's okay. Beats the alternative. It's better than staying in a bad relationship. That's for darn sure. So what's next week? So next week, we have very exciting guests coming. We have Mork from Ork and Mindy from Colorado. And they're going to be here and they're going to be talking about blending two cultures or backgrounds into a cohesive relationship. Talk about two worlds colliding. Nanu, nanu. Nanu, nanu. Um, I don't know. What, what does that mean? Yo, lizard thighs. Is that a greeting? Are you from around here? I am Mork from Ork. Uh, I'm Mindy from Boulder, Colorado. Where is Ork? Out near Beetlejuice. Take a left, travel two light years, right over there. So you're from outer space? No, I'm from Ork, which is a different planet. I don't live in outer space. Oh, this is very confusing. I wonder what they got to eat. I wonder what he eats. <laughs> <laughs>